Welcome to Shield Sports Desk. I am Jeff Larson. The softball team was riding a 13-game winning streak heading into last weekend's matchup against the UIC Flames. The weekend started with a doubleheader on Saturday. UIC took the first game 4-1, snapping the Crusaders' winning streak. But things quickly turned around in the second game as the Crusaders got back on the winning side, taking the win 5-2. Sunday's matchup would be the series finale between the Horizon League teams. The Flames scored nine runs in the second inning to jump out to a 10-1 lead. But in the bottom of the third with one out and one on, Sarah Strickland bombs one over the center field wall. She had two home runs in this game, but it wouldn't be enough as UIC wins big in six innings, 17-6. UIC's Devin Miller improved her record to 6-10, while Sam McGee for the Crusaders dropped her record to 11-4. Right now in the Horizon League standings, Loyola is the last remaining unbeaten team in conference with Butler sitting in second, with Valpo trailing the Bulldogs by only a half game. The Crusaders will step out of conference when they host Big Ten's Purdue on Thursday, April 7th for a doubleheader before they step back into conference play this weekend when they take on the Loyola Ramblers. The men's baseball team made their home debut last weekend against the UIC Flames. Sunday's game was a makeup from Friday because of weather. In the sixth inning we go, Andrew Bain singles up the middle and brings home Corey Thibodeau to make it 5-0. Then later in the sixth, Will Hagel knocks one to right, bringing home two more to push the lead to seven. Then in the eighth, Chris Manning doubles to left field to bring home two runs. That sparked a six-run eighth inning as the Crusaders win big 13-1. Tyler Deachin was solid from the mound as he went eight innings, giving up three hits and one earned run. He walked two and struck out eight, improving his record to two and five. Joey Beagle with the loss for UIC, he drops to one and two on the year. Every Crusader starter had at least one hit as they ended up with 17 total hits. Vapo sits currently in fifth place, trailing Wright State by two games for the top spot in the Horizon League, who only lead UIC by one game. The team will step out of conference Tuesday and Wednesday when they take on Indiana State on April 5th and then Wabash on April 6th. Then the Crusaders will go back to conference play when they go on the road this weekend to take on Cleveland State. The women's tennis team was in action last Sunday when they battled Youngstown State. The Crusaders were swept by the Penguins 7-0. The women will be back on the court on Wednesday, April 6th when they travel to take on Chicago State. The men's tennis team was in action as well against Youngstown State. The Crusaders lost in a tight battle 4-3. The men swept 3-0 in doubles, but the Penguins came into singles action, only letting Chris Baum and Eric Honnert for the Crusaders win in singles. The men will be in action on Wednesday, April 6, when they take on IPFW at the Valpo Athletic Complex. Finally, the men's and women's track and field teams were in West Lafayette to compete in the Mike Pollan Invitational hosted by Big Ten's Purdue University. For the men, five different Crusaders posted top 10 finishes. Jarrett Meekins took second in the long jump, posting a 23-foot, 8-inch jump. Steve Schubert took sixth in the triple jump with a 42-foot, 10-and-quarter-inch jump. And Chris Hoven took eighth with a 40-foot, 4-and-3-quarter-inch jump. Bill Rickson took seventh in the discus with a 144-foot, 9-inch throw. Finally, Julian Smith took fifth in the 200-meter dash, posting a time of 22.32 seconds. For the women, Sarah Drozdowski was the star for the Crusaders as she finished in the top 10 in two different categories. She took sixth in the hammer throw, posting a 153-foot, 4-inch throw, which is good for fourth best in Crusader history. Sarah took seventh in the shot put, posting a 41-foot, half-inch throw, which is good for third best in Crusader history. She also cracked the top five by posting a 128-foot, 1-inch throw for the discus, which is good for fourth on the all-time list. Other notable finishes, Jory Balin took 16th in the 100 and 400 meter hurdles, and Nicole Zahel posted 12th in the 3,000 meter steeplechase. Both teams will be in action again on Friday, April 8th, when they head just up the road to Chicago to participate in the Chicago Land Championships. First event is scheduled at 1 p.m. That's it from the Shield Sports Desk. I am Jeff Larson. Thanks, Jeff. At the beginning of the week, Valpo got its first real taste of severe weather. For more on this, we go to Storm Shield Chief Meteorologist Lisa Meadows. While well, Lauren, the Valparaiso University Storm Intercept team had their first chase of the season this Sunday, and it turned out to be a bust, literally. It all started out here in the VU Weather Center at 7 a.m. for a morning meeting. A code yellow was sent out via email the night before stating conditions continue to improve for severe weather on Sunday warranting the early morning get together. After the drivers and individual cars were organized, a code red was issued with instructions to meet for deployment at 10 a.m. 
Five cars were slathered in Rain-X and rigged with CBs for communication before the students piled in for the long haul to the Illinois-Iowa border. At about 5.30 p.m., Vucet was just in the vicinity of the target area when things took a turn for the worse on a county line gravel road. The lead car experienced a flat tire and all hope of getting in the right position was out the window, but it wasn't necessarily all a bust. As the forecast verification shows, the team did choose the right target area. Based on what we saw on all of our models and everything, if we would have gotten to where we wanted to get, we would have probably seen a nice wall cloud or some other nice storm system, which it turned out it never produced a tornado, but it would have been a lot cooler than seeing lightning off in the distance. This team continued monitoring the storm on the way back as well as the temperature and dew point conditions along the way. In the end, most students still considered the chase a success after learning the ropes from the upperclassmen. Well, I got to know a little bit more about how the seniors go about looking at the mesoscale data and where we need to be located. So different uh, dynamic aspects as to uh, where we need to be located. And uh, maybe I learned how to change a spare tire in case something comes up. There's still five weeks left in the spring semester, so we'll just have to see how the rest of the severe weather season turns out. Reporting from the VU Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Lisa Meadows. Thanks, Lisa. Stay tuned to VU TV for your daily weather updates. Now, unfortunately, they didn't see any tornadoes on Sunday, but uh, I wonder if any more severe weather will be headed our way. I don't know. For more on that, let's go over to Shield Meteorologist Alyssa Pollock. We've had a gloomy start to the week and you're going to want to keep your umbrellas handy for these next couple of days as we've got a lot of rain headed into our area. We could even see a brief shower for tonight. We'll be cooling down to 39 degrees under mostly cloudy skies, winds out of the east at 6 miles per hour, and the chance for rain increases as we head into tomorrow. 57 degrees for our high, it'll be mostly cloudy and this chance for showers lingers all day long. The possibility for thunderstorms though increases as we head into the evening hours. We'll also be experiencing some breezy conditions with winds out of the southeast at 10 miles per hour and we, as we take it down the five day stretch, things don't look to be getting any drier for us here for the remainder of the week. 57 for our high tomorrow. We'll be spending Friday and Saturday in the mid-60s. Saturday and Sunday both cloudy with a chance for showers cooling down a bit on Sunday with a high of 57. But good news for the beginning of next week that sunshine will be returning with a high temperature of 53 degrees. For The Shield, I'm meteorologist Alyssa Pollock. Thanks, Alyssa. In more Valpo news, this past weekend, the American Cancer Society made its way to the Valparaiso University community in efforts to spread knowledge and support to cancer awareness and cancer research. The Shield's Randall Spriggs has more. The American Cancer Society visited the Valparaiso University community this past weekend in order to spread cancer awareness. Students and faculty occupied the ARC in which hosted this fun-filled event. Basketball competitions, power walking, laser tag, or a period of summer relaxation was some of the popular activities during this event. The event also included endless amounts of walking, music, and food. I had the chance to sit down with cancer survivor Katie McGann on how she felt about the event. It means that a different generation of, of, of activists and advocates and survivors and victims are, are all uh, they're, they're banding together with, with the older generation uh, because I, I am older than most of the kids here and uh, it's good to see that these kids take this so seriously and they want to help and they want to be a part of it and uh, they want to be a part of what happens next including the research that goes along with, uh, with all the donations that we get. With the awareness of numerous amounts of faculty and students in attendance, the American Cancer Society hopes to continue to spread awareness across the nation with many fun-filled events created to promote research. As you can see, the Valparaiso community enjoyed the event and look forward to similar events next year. Reporting for The Shield, I'm Randall Spriggs. Thanks, Randall. You can make donations to the American Cancer Society at any time by vis visiting their website at www.cancer.org. Sunday afternoon, a new organization on campus held their first event. For more on this, we go to SHIELD correspondent Mandy Rothgen. 
Despite the looming possibility of bad weather, one of campus's newest organizations was still able to have their first event. Three freshmen created this new group, PEACE, which stands for People Everywhere Are Chasing Equality. Along with their advisor and core teacher, Professor Blacker Hansen, Mickey Suber, Monserrat Gutierrez, and Julia Stike were able to put together the organization to promote community here at Valparaiso University, as well as the name of the organization, PEACE. Um, the idea of an organization is to try to bring the campus together and like we're already together pretty well but you know there are some issues that students still have with each other and we just want to make the get the info out there about the different situations so students can be informed and make better decisions about you know how to treat people you know become a peaceful university I guess. The event on Saturday, which was also core approved, had music performed by Rosebud and The Still Life, as well as speakers and poet Demetrius Aperon. Jimmy Johnson Hungry at Howie's donated food, and door prizes were handed out for those who attended the event. While Peace isn't planning any new events for the rest of the semester, President Mickey Suber and the rest of the organization are eager to plan events for next year. For The Shield, I'm Mandy Rathjen. Thanks, Mandy. Be sure to look for more Peace events next year. By now, you've probably heard the song Friday by Rebecca Black. Sean Jones has more on why people are so obsessed with this teenage phenomenon. Rebecca Black's song Friday has become a surprise hit, but not for the usual reasons. Unlike most songs, Friday became popular because of how bad it is rather than how good it is. Oh, well, I really think it's because of its... Uh Overall simplicity, it uses a very simple format, like a four chord style, so it's very easy to make many variations of the song uh, within itself, and since it's a very simplistic style, uh, you can easily spin off of the Friday theme and really make it your own parody. The cheesy lyrics, over-the-top music video, and Black's nasally singing voice have already inspired numerous parodies. Well, without a doubt, I think my favorite parody is the Brock Stub parody, where he basically just says the same words, but it's really awkward how it comes out, but it's that awkward kind of funny. Then there's also a bad lip reader version that is particularly hilarious, makes no sense whatsoever, which is pretty much my kind of comedy anyway. The music video has reached over 58 million views on YouTube in the past month, proving there's no such thing as bad publicity. Friday has proven to be so popular that it debuted at number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100 list. Reporting for The Shield, I'm Sean Jones. Thanks, Sean. Luckily, there are plenty of good songs out there to get this one out of everyone's head. That's all from this week's Shield. Come back next week for the latest Valpo news. I'm Justin Thompson. And I'm Laura Winnie Godbreath. Have a great night, Valpo.